Hello again. <laughs> it's been a while. So we just had our final inspection. Um, <laughs> took about <laughs> five minutes and we passed. So ah, <laughs> we're done. I'm so happy. Oh God, this house. It's gone on for so long and we have more to do, but <laughs> we're done for now. We have interior doors, baseboards, trim, stuff like that, but that's yep. about it. Otherwise, all the outside's done. Everything looked good. Signed off. Really was the easiest inspection. We can of live them in it all. now. Yeah, we can actually live in it now. Shh, still don't tell him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He saw all of our shit everywhere, so yeah. I don't think he cared. Yeah, but I don't think so. And like the two thing, we added a bunch of stuff so that he like wouldn't care. Like we added this flashing, the deck flashing, so that it looks like the deck flashing's on when we actually do our deck. So it will be. And this is our our pressure release valve for the hot water heater that's in the crawl space. It's piped out with CPVC. We added flashing behind her conduit where it was, um, you could just see the thing. He actually didn't even notice this. Are you looking at that? Can you see that? He didn't even notice that, but whatever, not my problem. Yeah, it's great. And then we, oh, hey, let's go take the thing off the doors. Where's the, here, come on. We put these up so he wouldn't care because he said we need to block this with plywood. All right, guys, welcome back. As you saw uh, just a second ago, we passed our final inspection. So it's time to get on to some more projects. We're going to be working on our deck footings today. We're going to be pouring the deck footings. The freaking dogs, dude. <laughs> so we did run into a little bit of a problem, and that is this deck footing is not the full 30 inches below the ground that needs to be. It's about half that at 18 inches, and that's just because we hit rock. So we literally, I hit rock, I chipped out some big pieces <laughs> that didn't even scratch the surface. And so we're just gonna pour right on top of that rock because the rock, I think, goes deep enough for sure because I can't get things further down there, so. So what we'll do is we'll put two pieces of rebar in here and then we have kind of a little circular one that will go at the bottom. This one over here, we were able to do the full 30 inches down. As you can see, it's a little deeper. And then this one will do the same thing. We have a little circular one at the bottom and then we have are two pieces of rebar that will go right in there. Since we were able to do this one full depth, it's a 12 inch wide column all the way down, and then at the bottom about four inches, it flares out and goes to about a 18 inch to 20 inch wide uh, circle. So that way we have a bigger base and then we go up to our column, so. Chelsea is working on mixing that other one. This is kind of at the point where we need to make it the way it's going to be. There it goes. So we're just gonna screw it off like you normally would. So just using my magnesium float to screw and then we're gonna go back. So it looks all nice and neat. 
and then we'll give that a little longer to dry and then come back and do it again. But yeah, so we're done building the footings and I will see you guys in a second to build the rest of our deck. After getting the footings poured and letting them dry, we then squared the corners of our deck just by measuring diagonally like you normally would square any building. Um, and then once we found the corner, we were able to drill the hole for the bracket that's gonna hold up the post. So I just did this using my normal drill, uh, a little hard the drill's kind of old and uh, probably needs to be replaced at this point, but it did okay for this. We made a pretty inconvenient mistake on this first one. Uh, you're supposed to cut the sleeve and the bolt down to what exact height you need. Um, it only has to go in a certain number of inches, so you don't need the full depth. This one didn't go in the full depth, obviously, but after I pounded in, we got stuck with that sleeve still on the bolt. So I had to go back with an angle grinder and cut that sleeve off and then cut the bolt to the proper height and then secure it later. So do that first. We did this other one correctly, so it worked out pretty good, uh, as you can see. But definitely try not to make that mistake yourself because it's very, very frustrating. So that's level with the thing. Mm -hmm. Still recording? Mm -hmm. This makes more sense. That did way better. <laughs> All right, so as you saw, we just stood up those posts. We made sure they were plumb and then used a level to level that outside joist and then nail it in. And that kind of held everything together. Now the detail to hold up this beam onto the post is a little different. Um, I wanted to use the same post to hold up the deck and the roof over the deck. Um, I didn't want a separate post holding up the deck and then separate post holding up the roof, just because that would have meant more digging and more footings. So you could just nail our two 2x10s two that we're using for the beam to the post, um, but you're supposed to have the beam supported underneath so it's sitting on something and not supported with screws or with nails. So what we did is I made a little bracket out of angle iron um, and then we just screwed that bracket to the post using some structural screws.
After getting all the deck framing up, we then had to start on the roof. So I'm cutting the post here, I'm notching it so that we can set our 2x10 beam right in that notch and then use structural screws again to secure the beam to the post. And that way, if there's any uplift from wind or anything, the beam's not just going to come straight off of the post. They'll all be connected together. Once we got all of the roof joists up, ceiling joists, roof joists, roof rafters. After we got all of the rafters up, uh, we put the fascia board on, which was just another 2x8. We're using 2x8 rafters and 2x8 uh, floor joists for this. Um, we put that fascia board up, and then it was time to sheath the roof. Our camera died, but we just used zip sheathing and taped the seams as you would for any other roof. That way it was completely waterproofed, and eventually we'll put metal up there as well. So after that was done, then we went on, we stained the deck, and then it was time to move to decking, which was a little harder than I thought it would be, but also still not that hard. Now to putting on our decking. So a little bit about the decking first. This is not brand new material. So because of the cost for the decking, this 10 foot wide by 8 foot deep deck would have cost about, I think it came out around $3,000 uh, or $2,000 to get all Trex decking for. Um, so it was super expensive um, to get what we wanted. So I traded some stuff on Craigslist and ended up with some decking that was taken off an old house. Not an old house, but um, it was taken off a house. So it's not brand new, it's been used, but it's in great condition. There's like no scratches that go down to the full depth of the laminate on top. Um, so it works great. And we get it for a lot cheaper, basically nothing, because we traded stuff for it. So yeah, so that's the decking. Uh, we chose to go with composite because I don't want to be restaining decking every year. I don't care if I have to every five years or so restain the whole structure, but I don't want to be restaining the decking all the time. And with snow in our area, when you use a snow shovel, it can scrape off that paint or whatever stain you use uh, on that decking. So it goes a lot quicker than if you were somewhere like Phoenix. Um, but up here in the northern part of Arizona, we get that snow and it's rougher on the decks. So we use composite. So, and then you might be thinking to yourself when we were building the structure for the deck, what that horizontal or that flat 2x6 was for that we put in there. We're doing what's called picture framing the deck. Because we're using these composite decking boards and the edges of the deck don't have the same color as um, the top that you'll see. The edges are the composite material, so it's like a gray. You don't want to just lay your decking boards all the way across because you'll see the end and it won't look great. You want to put basically a picture frame. So put these two pieces that go around and meet in a 45 um, around the deck and that way you can't see the edge of all your horizontal boards. So after I got all of these secure, it was a little bit of a, of a head scratcher to cut those 45s with the posts in the way, but I got it done. Um, all it did was just taking a little, a little use with the square. But after we got all that done, we just laid the deck boards across. It went super quick. We screwed them all into the joists, and that's about it. Um, yeah, it's not super hard to use these things. You just get color match screws and throw screws in the top.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Starting this spring and the summer, we're going to have more regular videos again, so stay tuned for those. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments.